Hi everybody, Tim Hughes here. Uh, I'm the CEO and co-founder of DLA Ignite. With me today, I've got Celia, and we're going to talk about podcasting, um, why you should be podcasting, the importance of it, a little bit about the history of it. Um, but before we get into that, Celia, can you can you uh, tell us where people can get hold of you? Oh, 100%. You can always find me on LinkedIn. It's Sia Yasso Tornrat. And um, trust me, S-Y-Y-A, I should be the only person that pops I up. Think you're the only, I think you're the only person with that name on, on LinkedIn, yes. Yeah, exactly. With that spelling, at least. Um, yes. But also, you can always find me on Twitter, not as frequently, at S, uh, I am S Yasso. Right. Okay. Um, so... Um, what, what's your journey? How, how did you get into podcasting and how did you get here? And, and the reason why I always ask this question is that my business partner, his daughter is 20. And she says that there's she said, Daddy, there's lots of white male middle class people who are running things. And I don't see myself as that. I want to see inspirational women that I could say I want to be like that. So this when I ask you the question, it's not just about yeah, I did this and I did it's about it's about when you speak to that 20 year old um to, to Maddie who's 20 year old, what is it that you if she's gonna be like you, what is it that you she needs to do? Oh, first and foremost, I love it and just try. That's one of my favorite advice to give. I've got 10 nieces and nephews. I tell them, look, you're never gonna be a pro at something from the jump. And if you are, then you're extraordinarily talented, but you have to just try to even see if it's something that is going to click for you. But my journey into podcasting as a podcast producer, I started my own company right before the pandemic, um, was kind of a fortuitous, fell into it kind of thing, to be brutally honest. Mm -hmm. I had uh, 20 plus years in corporate technical sales, and um, it was my time to leave. I lost a passion for sales, lost mm -hmm. a passion for technology, to be honest. And uh had to figure out what to do with myself. And in a year and a half journey of personal travels, which I'm not going to lie to you, I realized that champagne taste was zero corporate budget. So I had to figure out what to do with myself very quickly. And my business partner and I decided, well, while you're trying to figure it out, why don't we do a podcast? And I said, well, I'd like to do it around technology. And it, it was called Innovation Calling. And it was really popular. And we found out very quickly, you can't bring CIOs, CTOs, CEOs into your closet at home. So we went looking for a studio and we decided that we wanted to start our own studio and we partnered up with a co-working space. And that's what launched our studio business, which facilitated our podcast production uh, agency that is today. Fantastic. So, and, and I totally empathize with you. I, I was in a position um, when I was, I was doing corporate sales. We, 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 both of us have a um, high tech background and, and I was, uh, sorry. We have our scars. Yeah, 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 yeah. We and and you know my my background is selling accounting systems, and I got to a point where I thought, I, you know, I really don't want another accounting system. I've had enough of this, and I need to do something else. And like you, I kind of looked around, and I think um, for you know my parents were of the generation where you went and got a job, and then you did that for life. Whereas I think you know we, we're ne you know now of the of the the generation where you can do something and then you can switch and do something else. Well, there's I think there's so much freedom in knowing that you're not attached, and I, I guess people equate that to dating versus marriage, right? Yeah. And I look, I think our, I'm a Gen Xer, so I feel like we're the first generation where it was proven that we're disposable. The mass layoffs, the Content, uh, the concept of you know working for one company for 35 years until you retire, that really started evolving around the 80s and 90s and that freedom to say, look, the company's not beholden to me and I'm not beholden to the company. And it really accelerated with the millennial generation and now the subsequent generations. And it's really about satisfaction in your own one ride on this you know journey that we call earth, right? So I kind of subscribe to it, but at the same time, I also am loyal. I think that's maybe a product of my generation too. I, I still have that little one foot in the door to let's see how this can ride out, I guess. So uh, podcasting, um, mm. tell us a little bit about um, the history of it, um, how it came about um, and, and how you got into it. Well, I, so the whole idea of podcasting, and I think it's gotten 
refined and reformed over the pandemic is traditionally an audio file, right? And it's distributed across an RSS feed. And so this is something that technically is a definition of a podcast. So like this, right now that we're talking on a video platform, this is a video streaming type uh, podcast, if you want to call it, but you take that audio file, you strip it, and then you distribute it across the, you know, the traditional formats. And that was really ultimately the freedom. The advent of the internet offered people like us the ability to have a voice and to be able to articulate whatever topics that made us happy, right? Underwater basket weaving, there's an audience for that, I'm sure, right? And as the technology and bandwidth has improved over time, it's allowed the masses to really embrace and adapt it for whatever purpose, whether you want to talk about, you know, Game of Thrones all day long, or you want to talk about cybersecurity, there's a place for everybody. And I think that's why podcasting is so attractive is because you can listen to it anytime you want. You can multitask while you're doing it and you could participate in it if you'd like by, you know, building and circling around a community around that podcast. So it's just a lovely, lovely tool. I consider from a business perspective, it's a lovely business tool for marketing to grow brand recognition, to create a community around your brand. I think that I think there's something for me podcasting. There's something punk about it, Ooh. which is that, um, you know, when um, music for my parents was, you know, you had to go to university and have years of being trained to be a musician, whereas when um, punk started in 1977, you didn't need to actually be able to play an instrument. You just needed an element of talent. And some people would even disagree with that. Um, and I think with podcasting is that you don't, you know, you don't need to have had any training around the way that you interview people. You can just get on and do it and just get, and it's, it's about your personality and about the interest of the other people. Is that, would you agree with that? 100% agree with that. I, Actually, for all of our clients, even and I'd say 99% of our clients are business, by the way. So they're businesses. It's all about your personality because people want to do business with people they know, like, and trust. Yep. Right. And, and I think that's such a critical component because in the pandemic, if it showed us anything, it's that we can't physically be in front of each other anymore, but business still needs to be had. Relationships still need to be developed. It may not be. Um, as the way the human likes to interact where I can like shake hands with you and high five you occasionally and, you know, whatever, but we have to adapt accordingly. And I think this medium and tool, the way we're interacting right now, we would have never met each other otherwise, you know? And I think no. that's, that's the beauty of it is that we can still evolve human connection. It's just going to, you know, be slightly different. So from a podcast perspective, I mean, we, we talk about, we've used the title, how soon is now to share your story. Um, and, and while there's a, a pun in there's a there's a for the Smiths fans out there, there is a there's a hidden pun in there. Um, but it is actually very true that 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 to do business nowadays, it's not just a case of, well, we we the pandemic has changed everything. You know, we're, we're used to now sitting at home and, and working within our um, working within office space, not necessarily traveling, but we still have to do business. And this gives you an ability to, as a platform to talk to more people at scale across the world. Is it, it would is that something that you see as well? One hundred percent. So again, my background's in sales, so I am biased. Okay. Yeah. How? So let me put it this way: my boyfriend makes fun of me, made fun of me. Nah, makes fun of me still to this day. He's like, you know, what do you do all day? You just like drink and eat on the company dime. Right. And that's something that can't necessarily happen in person anymore. Trust me, I've done some virtual happy hours with, you know, prospects and clients as well, because that is a way to build a connection. But how else can you do it? What else is your competition doing right now that that you can differentiate yourself? Because there are thousands of sales reps representing thousands of products that want to tap into your very finite budget. Right. For whatever project you might have in place. And so that to me is how I try to like shape the conversation or the scope of understanding where a podcast can fit for your either personal or professional branding. And it is this, how many salespeople actually have a podcast for themselves, right? Not that many. There's over 2 million podcasts out there, but if you really niche it down to actually with what your focus is and what your intentions are, the opportunity is limitless. Yeah. And, and so, so I've done, um, 
One of the reasons why I run a podcast is that this gives me a platform to go and talk to CEOs. I can ring up a CEO and say, would you like to come on my podcast? And he or she nearly always will say yes. And you say, well, what we need to do is we need to do some prep. So I've got 30 minutes with a CEO in preparation, 30 minutes with the CEO doing the interview. The person comes off it and, and they're my friend. And if I want to bring them up and get them to buy something, you know, in terms of that journey, know, like, and trust, we've been through that journey as part of the podcast. Absolutely. 100%. There's no faster way than to get ingratiated with someone than to stroke their ego. <laughs> That's really and, ultimately and this, it. And this thing is, you know, um, you know, I'd have sales leaders saying, well, why do we, as a salesperson, why are you wasting your time doing a podcast? Because I can sell more. Yeah. Like, you know, you're, you're telling me I need to be selling high at sea level. I'm, I've got sea level people not banging on my door wanting to be on my podcast. Right. Well, I think that, I think there's something to be said again. When you are a salesperson doing a podcast, I would certainly hope, unless it's your intention, that you're actually talking about things that are relevant to, like, of interest, right? You're not talking about, like, for me, I worked in a data center, right? Hardware, um, you know, services all around the infrastructure, right, of, you know, technology. It ain't no one want to talk about servers and storage and networking and application software management, monitoring tools, security, what on top of that. Like no one cares what they do care about, however. So I, I nearly fell asleep when you, you said, so, so I'm joking. Man. I know, I know. Wake up, wait, wake up, everyone. But, but the thing is, is people will want to talk to you though when they're like, okay, you know, we know what you are, we know what you represent, we know what company you're with. That's a what. But why would I want to work with you is, oh, hey, you had a great conversation talking about, um, I, I, I use underwater basket weaving as a random thing, but I hey. I don't know. I, I often use underwater basket weaving. I don't know where that comes from. So you you are and I am. So we must have got that from somewhere. I don't know. I know. We probably should look that up, huh? Like, Because uh, I, I've because it, it used to be, I remember, uh, you know, the on LinkedIn, you can um, tick people off for certain um, attributes. And I'm sure underwater basket weaving was one of those because I've, I've I've actually um, given someone um, uh, um, kudos for underwater basket weaving. <laughs> you know what? Like I said it to everyone. Look, if you're going to want to do a specific podcast that's very niche, you may not get, quote, you know, Joe Rogan numbers or whatever, but that's not your intention, right? No. If you have a core audience of a thousand listeners, but a thousand or 900 of them actually follow through on any action items you request isn't that a better return of your community than a million followers and one percent doing anything that you want them to do right so i actually so you know, i actually looked before um uh before the show today and and i've never asked anybody so tim talk as a as a hashtag on linkedin it is is a hashtag because it's it's used any hashtag and i've never asked anybody to follow it ever and and I actually looked just an hour ago, and there's 20 people following it. Now now, okay, so 20 isn't Joe Rogan or anything like that. But I, you know, uh, I, you know, I just run a very very small, but perfectly formed podcast. But 20 people is more than zero. zero. Bingo. Uh, and on top of that, we have lurkers. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, at least for me in the tech space. My circle of friends do not subscribe. My circle of friends do not comment. In fact, for them, I think in some capacities, they think of LinkedIn still as a job posting site as opposed to the social media business platform that it's evolving into. And so a lot of them, they will not comment because they don't want to be perceived as A, flaking, right? Not doing their job. And B, they don't want to have that assumption that, oh, wait a minute, as an employer going, hey, why are you on LinkedIn all day long? Right. And I think that that has to evolve as well. But podcasts yeah, I, I, I have a rule of thumb that for one person that comments, there's another nine people that don't. I can uh, see that. Uh, and so um, my partner posted a photo of me and and, and her um, recently on LinkedIn. And, and one of her uh, colleagues, she works for Ascension. One of her colleagues found her up and said, do you know Tim Hughes? And she said, yes, yeah, he's my partner. I watch all of his Tim talks. Now I don't know who that person is. Yeah. Uh, and I and 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 I've said this before, and and obviously he's not watching the one I mentioned last time. 
I might, I might have scared everybody off after doing one about sex on, on uh, this week anyway. So, but, but the fact of the matter is there are people out there and you will, you will get, if he's going to run a podcast, there are people out there that are watching that you will never know. Right. I'm telling you, Tim, I'm sure you experience it as well. I've got former colleagues that I haven't talked to since I left the industry. And then I get this random LinkedIn message or text message saying, Hey, uh, I think my company might be looking to do podcasting. I know you're doing it. Can you help us? Mm. I can't tell you how many times those personal referrals and references and that network. I even had prospects that are like, hey, I know you and I were talking. I'm not ready yet, but I know someone else who I think is ready. Mm. And I would never have known because podcasting is not something that is, quote, a lead gen. It's a tool to get you out there, to get your mm. message out there, your personality. The biggest thing is who you are out there. And I encourage everyone to do it. So in reference to the Smith song, How Soon Is Now, if you listen to the lyrics, it's a bit depressing. It's a Smith song. So It's a Smith like, song. Yeah. It's a Smith song. So, And I'm a chirpy person. So, But the thing is, is like the lyrics of it is, is about a, a person that like is anti, not antisocial, but they're shy hmm. and they can't seem to make friends and they go home and they cry, right? But here's the thing. It's that confidence. It's that that hurdle rate, if you will, to just jump over to say, you know what, I'm going to try to overcome my shyness and I'm going to dip my toe in a way that I can create content, get people to get to know me in maybe a topic that I'm most comfortable talking about. And then it can evolve from there. It's how soon as now is literally up to you when you decide you're ready to do something. But as you asked me earlier, just freaking try, try yeah, it once. Yeah, and, and what's the saying about, you know, uh, where you want to be next is just outside of your comfort zone. You know, you've got to put yourself out there. You've got to, uh, yeah. uh, to and, but but doing podcasts, I can assure you, the audience out there, it is an amazing way for generating leads. If you've got, got a podcast, and when I'm in a podcast, not sitting there going, the ecosystem of the <laughs> of the leadership is, and what do you think about this? That that is not what's going to generate your leads, because yeah. actually one of the things that scares a lot of marketing people is actually people want they want information, yes, but they actually want to be entertained. Yes, yes, because look, if I wanted to attend a lecture, I'd go back to college. OK, if I want to and even then, even the lectures aren't getting you know better is what I hear. But when I went to school, let me tell you, man, like it was like I had to clip my eyelids up to like, you know, keep paying attention, you know. But uh, but that's the whole thing. Even if you were dry. OK, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to let, let me counter a little bit, Tim. What if it's like a dry topic? OK, because it, because it is relevant and there is an audience for it. There's a lock for every key, as I say. If you want to go hardcore technical and you want to talk about bits and bytes and blah, 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 there's an audience for it. Just don't expect it to be like a Joe Rogan type numbers performance. Like know what it is. Set your key performance indica uh, indicators accordingly. Right. So if you can get five people to do white download white papers because of this technical podcast, that's a win. It, right. It, if you it, it is. And, some and kind you of call of action. About, you can be ultra technical in, in, in terms of the podcast. Because, yeah. but but you will drive that audience. Though people do want to have to be entertained, and you could still make a technical a technical discussion entertaining. Oh, for sure. There's like, look, there's so many geek jokes out there. They're just about as bad as dad jokes, right? Like, you could always put something together where there's some level of again, whatever that connection may be, right? Because humor is also subjective, right? So what you and I think is funny is probably like boring as all get out for like you know. My sister's kids. <laughs> so, you know, but but that is, I think, I, I love to encourage anyone to try it. If you're not quite ready to do your own podcast, then my suggestion is guest. Be a guest on other people's podcasts, right? And then get comfortable being a guest. Get comfortable with having a conversation. Get comfortable with you just being on camera if that's a, a video-based podcast. Or investing into equipment so you sound good, Right. But there's also the um, find your why on why you want to do something and plan it, right? So podcasts don't have to be indefinite. It could be a season. Maybe do something for like 10 or 12 episodes. That's about a quarter if you do a biweekly release, right? So for three months, try it out. And on top of that, the way I suggest for my clients who are kind of dipping their toe in, they're not 100% sure, is 
do what we call batch recording. So I know this is a live stream, but for those that maybe just not ready to go live, you could pre-record. Yep. You could actually record them in a day and then you're done for three months. Yep. And then you just do a slow drip release. So there's a lot of different ways you can go about it where it's not going to be all that overwhelming. There's tons of people that do what I do. We consult, we produce, et cetera. But there's a lot of resources available for those that are not even technically savvy. We can help you. And and I think the thing is, is that is is to make mistakes. Please. Because, yeah. because the thing is, is that you, you need and you need to, if you make a mistake, laugh at it. Uh, because, you know, we've all had to start from somewhere. We've all messed things up. We've all mispronounced people or it, we've all done it. You all have to start from zero. Um, and and what you'll find, the thing about social is it, it's a very um, it's a very embracing um, framework. People, I think actually, it's forgiving. I think it it's forgiving. People will, people will come to you and they will laugh with it. They don't laugh at you. They will say, at least you tried. Um, and and it's and and you you come back and you and people love it when you make mistakes because you push the boundaries of what can be done and what can be capable and people will respect you more for it. It's a it's a it's a brilliant way to actually you know. I started doing these live streams and we got them wrong. We set them up wrong. We did this wrong and we did this wrong. But it's fine. It doesn't matter. Yeah, and you know what's funny? What you think matters, people gloss right over it. If you guys are talking about something that's fun, great, informative, I'm all for it. So what if like you didn't get a graphic up in time or there was a stutter, whatever, doesn't matter. Mm. That's the whole point of it. There's perfect, there's beauty in imperfection. Mm. So just so you know, um, there's been people looking through the window behind you making faces. <laughs> and, and I thought it was really funny that there was actually people going, what's going on in there? And then, the, then the, and, but that, that, uh, and that's the thing is it, the, the imperfection is fine. Actually, it's funny. Yeah. No, for sure. Well, okay, look, between me and the fence post as a salesperson, if you can walk into a, a quote, happy hour networking meetup and you're recognized and people are like, hey, man, you've got a podcast. I'm talking, look, I'll never be an A celebrity A lister, but there's something about that little bit of ego grat gratification that also makes your job a hell of a lot easier because you don't have to shake hands and be like, Hey, my name is Sia Yasa Tornra. I'm with Innovation Media Enterprises. I'm a, you know what I mean? It's, they kind of already know who you are and it makes Absolutely. life so much easier. Absolutely. So Sia, thank you so much for uh, coming on today and sharing your insight. It's been uh, wonderful for, to have you on. Remind people where they can get hold of you. Absolutely. You can always find me on uh, LinkedIn. So Sia Yasso Tornrat. Um, I'm always with Innovation Media Enterprises. That's my business. And of course, you can find me on Twitter at I am S Yasso. Fantastic. Thank you so much for coming on today and talking about podcasting. It is such a, a an, an area that that people miss in the, the, the world of sales and marketing. Um, and thank you for coming on and, and confirming that. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it, Tim. You're welcome.